Hello. We're now live. We're figuring this all out. Technology is not our forte. But, Certainly not mine. But weight loss surgery and weight loss and health and wellness is. Yep. So that's actually what we're here to talk to you about today, not technology. So that's a good thing. Um, we have a few questions that we've already received. So just want to welcome everybody back and thank you guys for watching our last live. We had a lot of great feedback. Um, it was wonderful to connect with some of the patients and we're so happy to be on here again. Like I said, we're going to be doing this every week, every Wednesday at 1230. He almost didn't make it today, but here he is. I'm, I thought I was going to have to be alone. I'm glad you're bubbly and full of energy. Mm -hmm. Me, I did three gastric bypass and one sleeve gastrectomy before noon. So I'm a little tired, just a little. Maybe a little old. <laughs> Tired, just tired, not old. Not when old. I was young, I would do eight operations a day and be done by 3.30. But I'm too old for that. So I <laughs> told them, limit four operations a day. So I'm still half the day, still ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to keep taking care of our patients. Well, actually, today you have the afternoon off. Yeah, so. no office today. Which is why we are doing the lives on Wednesdays. So one of the questions that we did receive was, if you could explain a little bit of the difference between the sleeve gastrectomy and the gastric bypass, which are the two main procedures that we do. Okay, so, I mean, in fancy medical terms, we have operations that are called restrictive. All they do is restrict the amount of food you can eat. So they're essentially portion control surgery. The band used to be like that, we don't do it anymore. The sleeve is definitely like that. In other words, we do not change the absorption of sugar, carbs or anything. The food flows the same way through the stomach, through the duodenum, the jejunum and ileum. The absorption is the same, but we decrease the size of the stomach by removing 80 to 85 percent of it. And so it's called a sleeve gastrectomy, stomach removal. It doesn't give you malabsorption. So it will give you portion control. So you're a big food eater, like lots of meat and potatoes, uh, big meals, uh, burger, fries, it's awesome because it restricts the amount you can eat. You can order the Big Mac or the Whopper. You're going to have a quarter of it. You're going to be full. So that's a restrictive operation. Unfortunately, if you all eat something with a lot of sugar, a small portion of chocolate ice cream has the same calories as an eight ounce steak. Because it's all, we'll talk about this a little later. It's all about the calories. That's what it's about. So you can easily cheat the sleeve by eating small amounts of high calorie food. What is that? Dessert, ice cream, cookies. Tres leche. Tres leche, plan. <laughs> the gastric bypass is different. So the gastric bypass, we take the top of your stomach and we make a new stomach. The volume of that new stomach or pouch is the same volume as the sleeve. One is a long banana, the other one's a big fat apple, but they hold the same amount of food. So in that respect, they work the same. They restrict you. But in the gastric bypass, that new stomach, that new big apple, we actually bring the intestine up and connect it directly. So now the food is going to go from that big pouch into the intestine directly. The area that absorbs most of the sugar, simple sugars, is the duodenum and the first part of the ju jejunum. Food is not gonna travel there anymore. We're bypassing that area. That's why it's called a gastric bypass. So when you eat a sugary meal that on a sleeve would make you gain all the weight, on a gastric is gonna give you colic and diarrhea, but you're not gonna absorb the vast majority of that simple sugar. So the operation is much more effective because it gives you portion control and sugar malabsorption. Those two together have greater weight loss and more importantly, greater effect on the absorption of simple carbs and sugars, which is why it's much more effective for diabetics it's much more effective for a large amount of weight loss. It's much more effective for people who have a lot of intra-abdominal fat and metabolics. Now, a sleeve surgeon will tell you the results are the same. They're not, they're just not. So it's the point I made last week, when you go to your sleeve surgeon, ask them, can you do a gastric bypass? If the answer is no, they're probably not offering you. They may be offering you a sleeve because that's what good for you. But if you're in gastric bypass territory, they're still offering you a sleeve because that's all they knew how to do. You gotta choose the right operation. They work differently, pure restriction, restriction and malabsorption. The results are gonna be different. So I know it's probably a bad word as far as you know, weight loss and bariatric surgery goes, but what happens when you cheat? 
oh when you cheat so there's two ways of cheating and the first way is dangerous the second way is just a bit of a headache so let's talk about the first dangerous cheating when we just finish the operation we build the connections either the sleeve or the pouch that area just like if you smash your finger is very swollen it's I, we call it edema so it has to heal the swelling has to go away the scar has to mature and soften up during that process those connections those areas can become quite tight if you are on liquids and you go have a piece of chicken what's going to happen is it's going to get stuck in the area that's swollen and tight be it the sleeve or be it the anastomosis or the pouch especially the second anastomosis or the gastric bypass when that food stuck there you're going to be in horrible pain you're going to start throwing up you're going to feel terrible and in really rare rare bad cases you can actually damage the surgery and end up with a leak so it's very important not to cheat when you're on certain consistency if you're on clear liquids it's very important to stay on clear liquids when we advance you to full liquids it's very important to have the consistency of milk not something sticky or hard or a piece of steak because you're not ready now when the healing is all done about two months all the scarring has matured all the swellings go away you'll be able to eat everything but until then if you cheat you're gonna suffer and it is potentially dangerous the other way of cheating is eating high carbs high sugary food when you cheat like that the sleeve what happens you gain weight when you cheat like that the gastric what happens you get dumping you feel bad you get sweaty you feel bad you get bad colic and then you get diarrhea so cheating is never good cheating early on the consistency of the food can be dangerous cheating later you're either going to gain weight or you're going to feel bad because you're going to have a lot of diarrhea with the gastric so try to avoid cheating now mind you we're all going to cheat that's what we do but if you cheat a little bit usually you get away with it if you cheat a lot especially in the first month you're gonna pay the price so talking about the recovery after surgery i just want to emphasize about our nutritionists um we do have our head nutritionist and her assistants the diets that the nutritionists give you were created with the nutritionist but by dr sosa so when they tell you you can't eat certain something at a certain time it's because he knows on average how that surgery is healing now everybody is different and which is why we do customize the program many times to the patients so it's as one of the biggest advice that i can give patients sometimes is not compare yourself to the person that's sitting next to you um, because many times we'll tell one patient okay you're ready for let's say the puree stage they'll start and they'll realize they're not ready so we'll have to take them back to the full liquid stage and that patient may be in full liquid a little longer than the patient sitting next to them. And so then they're like, well, but if she can eat that, then I want to eat that. And it's very important to listen to the advice you specifically have been given. That's why our programs are very customized to our patients. You see Dr. Sosa at a month, he tells you what you can do. You see the nutritionist at a month, she tells you what you can do. And if for whatever reason you're not ready for that stage, then you see them again and you get you get taken to the proper stage. So I'm going to add two things to that. One is why is it so important to have a nutritionist? Because everyone is different. So you go to some surgeons who give you a, a handout and say, good luck with your eating. It says here week one, week two, week three. You may not be able to follow those guidelines. Those guidelines are followed by the vast majority of patients, 80%, but not 100%. So if you get in trouble and you don't have a professional that you can reach out and say, listen, I just had eggs, it didn't feel right, I threw up, what happened? They can tell you, let's back off, let's try this, but you need more protein, so let's do this. Individual, why individual? Because the tolerance of food is about the swelling and the scarring that's going on, not on your skin, on the inside, either inside your sleeve or in the pouch to gastric anastomosis. Those heal differently in different folks. Some folks make a lot of swelling when they have some trauma, some surgery. Some folks make a lot of scar. Some folks make no swelling and no scar and they never vomit. Everything goes through wonderfully. You have to tailor it to your body. You may be the person that's scarring more and needs to go liquids longer soft mushy food longer 
You can't say the nutritionist said at two months I can eat steak, therefore I'm eating steak whether I throw up or not. <laughs> Hello, if you're throwing up on steak, you're not ready for steak. Will you ever be ready for steak? Yes, when your scar softened and matured. The scar is medically based. Everyone makes different levels of scarring. Your diet has to be adjusted depending on how you're healing. So I was actually just speaking to a patient that was, uh, she's about a month, month and a half out. Um, you know, she tried eggs for the first time. And although it, it was on her diet, she wasn't cheating. She said, she's like, well, she said two things that really struck me when I was speaking to her. She said she could just tell like it wasn't feeling right. And so I told her just back off, you know, give it a couple more weeks. So just cause something you don't tolerate it and it's something that's allowed doesn't mean you're never going to tolerate some people do have certain affinities um for certain foods after surgery but you do try it again that was the first thing that she said the second thing that she said that it it's something that it's hard to teach um is that you you're never you're not hopefully you're never going to eat the same way you were eating before and so she said, yeah, the nutritionist told me to have eggs. So I made three hard boiled eggs. And I'm like, you just had, I go, how many hard boiled eggs did you eat prior to surgery? She said, three. I said, and you thought you were gonna be able to eat three after surgery? And she's like, well, when you put it that way, absolutely not, that's the whole reason I had the surgery. So a lot of the stuff and is, you know, you, you're retraining yourself. You're retraining yourself, and that's that's why it's important to follow each step and follow each guideline. Because just like a baby, you're you're learning to eat again. And if you really stick to those guidelines, they're really gonna stay with you. you know, and it's important to have somebody that can give you feedback. That's why our nutritionists are essential part of our program. And I don't just give you a handout. You have a nutritionist you can call and say, "This happened. What am I doing wrong? Give me some insight. What?" steps should I take? What can I replace eggs with at this stage? A protein shake, etc., etc. Yes. So, I mean, it was, we've been doing this for many, many years. So one of the things that, that I remember at one point, um, we used to tell patients and, and it's like, serve yourself on a small plate, maybe even use small utensils at the beginning. Because yes, we did surgery. Well, he did surgery, not we, because I don't go in the upper room. He did surgery on your stomach, but not on your cabeza, on your brain. So you have to train yourself that a small portion is gonna fill you. Because if you keep eating, you're gonna get to that point where you are too full. You will eventually learn, even if it's the hard way, you will learn. So uh, before I answer the next question, mm -hmm. this is a very important question, I'm gonna tell you about the two eating. This is hilarious and everybody, when they first hear it, they're like, oh my God, thank God, I thought I was crazy. <laughs> if you overeat, you're gonna sneeze. If you <laughs> overeat, your nose is gonna get runny and you're gonna get stuffy. And people are like, how did you know? I'm like, <laughs> it's a neurological reflex that happens when you overfill the pouch or the sleeve. And people thought, I thought I was crazy. Every time I, I overeat a little, I start sneezing. And everybody, I thought I was crazy. No, it is a known side effect. Your nose gets runny, you do sneeze, and you get stuffy. It is a reflex from one of the nerves. So yeah, if you start to feel that hiccupy or you know, a runny nose, stop. You've <laughs> eaten enough, the pouch is full and now it's distending. So we have a question, does dumping go away? Okay, let's recap, what is dumping? After the gastric bypass, not the sleeve, the gastric bypass, dumping is sugar malabsorption. If you eat a sugar load, you're not gonna absorb the sugar. It goes into your intestine. It irritates your intestine. It sucks some of the water from your blood into the intestine. I could use the fancy medical terms, but that's basically what it does. So it fills your intestines with water, which gives you colic, makes you feel a little sweaty, a little bad, and then you get diarrhea. Essentially, it's like you took a massive laxative, but the laxative was sugar. Does it ever go away? Not completely. Does it get milder? Yes. Your bowel begins to adjust. If you keep giving it sugar, 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 and you have diarrhea, diarrhea, eventually your bowel figures out, you know, I need to adjust and reabsorb some of the sugar. So the dumping gets milder. One of the old jokes I used to tell at every seminar, I said, if you're lucky, you're dumping will be so bad that when you look at an M&M, you get diarrhea. <laughs> Why? That's much more effective at maintaining the weight loss. When you start getting less and less dumping, translation, you're able to tolerate more and more sugar. 
that's bad for your health and your weight. Argument I have all the time with folks, but sugar is essential to, to, my, mm -hmm. to health. No, it isn't. There is no sugar in nature. There is no sugar in nature. We invented sugar. The closest thing we get to sugar in nature is honey. You know how hard it is to get honey in nature? <laughs> but we used to be hunter-gatherers. You could find honey like once a year maybe if you got lucky and fought off the bees. There is no <laughs> sugar in nature. What is sugar? The simple sugar, glucose. That sugar doesn't exist in nature. At a very rotten point of a strawberry or something, yes, you get much more closer to what's called a monosaccharide, glucose. We invented glucose. What did we do? We took complex sugar in the sugar cane, in beets, in other fruits. We chemically altered it. We concentrated it. We squeezed it and we got sugar. It is not necessary to live. You can absorb the carbs, the sugar that you need from complex carbohydrates to be perfectly healthy. If you never absorb that white stuff table sugar, <laughs> you'll be much healthier. Sugar is not necessary. Glucose is not necessary to live a perfectly normal life. But it sure does taste good. Unfortunately, <laughs> it does things to our brain that we like it. <laughs> it tastes very good. But yes, so just a, a, a little side story on, on dumping. Um, happened to be a friend of mine who had surgery. And so she called and said, hey, is Doc around? I said, yeah. She said, Can I talk to him? I think I'm having a heart attack. I said, okay, hold on. He's right here. She was in Walmart shopping and decided to like snack on, on some, I think they were Whoppers, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember the story perfectly correctly. And then she started feeling lightheaded, right. palpitations. Right. Your heart, your heart speeds up when you're dumping. And so that's when she called. She says, I'm sitting on the floor in Walmart, and I think I'm having a heart attack. And he's like, okay, well, walk me through what you just did. She's like, well, I got to Walmart. I was hungry. What did you get? I opened a bag of candy, and what did you have? I had chocolate. She's like, okay, you're not having a heart attack. She's like, how do you know? All I said is I opened a bag of candy. He's like, you're having dumping. So, yeah, the, the only thing that's missing is the chest pain, but it feels really weird. And, and basically, the diarrhea follows like 20, 30 minutes later. But yeah, so avoid the simple sugars if you had a gastric bypass because you're gonna feel bad. Avoid them if you had a sleeve because you're gonna gain weight. weight. So either way, the avoid message of this simple sugars. is sugar is not your friend. It isn't. So <laughs> I tell patients all the time, perfect guideline, you can have sugar once a month. Cake, ice cream, chocolate, flan, a trip to Cold Stone, once a month, you'll keep good weight. If you do it once a week, you're gonna gain weight. If you do it every day, you're gonna gain weight really fast. Good guidelines, very good guidelines. And I hear you say that to the sleep patients all the time. Yeah. So you can make the sleep work, but it requires more discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a question. Does your stomach stretch out after the sleep? Is that why people gain weight? So in practical terms, no. A right after surgery, like I was explaining earlier, you're swollen, you have edema. Again smash finger. You take your finger, you smash it. What does it do? <sighs> Swells up. Is your finger bigger? No, it's swollen. What will happen is the swelling will eventually go away and hopefully you didn't crack a bone <laughs> and then it becomes normal again. It's the same thing inside. When we staple, when we suture, it swells. So the lumen, the inside is much smaller because of all the swelling. As the swelling goes away, the amount that you can eat becomes more normalized. So you now notice that, yeah, in the beginning, one week, one month, two months, three months, you're able to tolerate a little more. Once the swelling is done, does your sleeve go from this size to this size? It does not. If you see an x-ray with an enlarged sleeve, it was built big. You know, it's not that you enlarged it over time. It, that area, the area of the stomach that we build the sleeve is not gonna go from this size to this size. Why does the sleeve fail? It's very, very simple, sugar, simple <laughs> carbs. It's the calorie stupid. People go, are you calling me stupid? I'm like, no. This is a take back on an old, old political thing. When Clinton was running for election, he kept telling all his team, it's the economy stupid. I want everyone talking about the economy. I don't want anybody talking about anything else, just the economy. It's the economy stupid. Because politically he knew he was gonna win. And I took that and I said, it's the calories stupid. It's not, you know, I'm eating less, I'm eating more. It's the calories. So, you know, 
this amount of ice cream has the same calories as this amount of steak. It's the calories. So why do sleeve fails? Because they're eating high, simple calories. Classically, sugar, soft, mushy carbs that never fills the sleeve. So what do you have to do? For breakfast, you don't have oatmeal. You have scrambled eggs and ham. The same volume that's gonna fill you, the scrambled eggs and ham has a quarter of the calories as the oatmeal. You never have breakfast cereal. Take all your breakfast cereal and throw it away. It's ridiculous to eat breakfast cereal. It's bad for you, whether you have surgery or not. It's pure sugar, pure carbs. They're gonna make you hungry two hours later. Breakfast needs to be protein-based. Whichever, whichever way you wanna get your protein, some, some people may be beans, eggs, ham, steak, fish, protein. It's the calorie stupid. Sleeves don't fail because they became twice as big. They fail because you're eating soft, mushy, high calorie, sugary foods. So just as a, a little aside, Dr. Sosa wrote a little pamphlet about it's the calorie stupid. So if you would like to receive that pamphlet, go ahead and send us your email and we will email you a copy. It's a little short little 10 chapter, the chapters are like a page and a half, two pages. She promised that, no, me. don't nag me for the pamphlet. If you don't get the pamphlet, it's on her. I'm not sitting there sending pamphlets. <laughs> but it talks a little, it goes into detail about its calories. And that's what we do on a daily basis. Regardless of the fact that we didn't have surgery, you know, we count our calories. We count our calories, we weigh ourselves, we're trying to intake more protein. We are, we found a protein, milk that we like that's lower in calories you need to become educated you need to learn to read labels right. you need to learn to count so, calories like my last little burst of weight loss i made one simple change every afternoon when i would get home whatever time 3 30 4 30 5 30 i'll be hungry so i go for my snack my snack was what are those things called pita oh, chips pita chips oh my god <laughs> so i have half a bag of pita chips and it, it felt good and it whatever the amount of calories in that, and I know this, but I was like, so I made a simple change. I went from eating pita chips to? Having a protein drink. Having a protein or shake. Or your almonds. Or my almonds and, and nuts. And just changing the kind of snack I was having. I'm still full, but I'm having one quarter of the calories I was having by changing carbs, pita chips, to protein. Protein shake and nuts. That simple change got five or six pounds off of me. So it's the calories, it's the calories, it's the calories. Yes. First and foremost, the calories. Then you can look at the contents of your calories. But first and foremost, the calories. We have a lot of patients that say, I am not going to be successful after surgery because I don't like healthy food. Well, newsflash, we don't need a lot of, I guess, what you would consider traditional No. Okay. We're back. So I bought mm -hmm. the whole Atkins book, like the actual book, and started reading the book and getting the recipes from the book. So I made cauliflower mashed potatoes and he refused to eat it. Then I got cauliflower rice and he refused to eat it. Um so every time I'm like, I'm on a health kick, he's like, just feed me within my calories what I like. He does a lot of sandwiches, so we just try to put a little extra protein in the sandwich, make sure I'm getting a low calorie bread or wrap. He does a lot of breakfast for dinner because it's easy to do something he likes with less calories and more protein. So within what you like, you can figure out how to eat it healthier and with less calories. So that is one of the things that I really has helped me. He can go off sandwiches and breakfast all day. I need to eat real food. So I've taken what I like and I've just made it healthier. I'll make arroz con pollo, I'll make it healthier. I'll get a little bowl that's much smaller, make sure I put less rice, more chicken. So it doesn't mean that you have to stop eating the things that you enjoy, the cultural foods that you enjoy. You just have to tweak them a little. And if you're gonna go for something you really love, then it's about the portion. So for example, Two, two techniques that I use. We used to love going to California Kitchen. My favorite thing was the, the, the spaghetti bolognese, 1,200 calories. I changed to the salad, 500 calories. The salad was just as tasty. The other way to do it, which I did it a couple of times, is great. 
this dish is 1200 calories but if i eat half it's 600 calories so when they serve me the thing got another plate eat half push the other half away and now i'm enjoying what i love but i'm getting the same 600 calories as i'm getting in the salad by choosing what i want to eat but now i have to portion control it because it's the calories that matter at the end of the day whether i eat 600 calories of spaghetti or 600 calories of salad it's the same 600 calories that's what matter i do this joke all the time to people i go 600 calories of steak 600 calories of ice cream which one will get you fatter it's the same the difference is when you eat 600 calories of steak you're full for a long time Very full. when you eat 600 calories of ice cream an hour later you're ready to eat again so that's where choices come in but at the end of the day it's about the calories on that whole steak and ice cream thing last thing we'll finish off on so the calories are most important for patients who had surgery even for patients who did it think about it as plumbing water down the drain ice cream what happens to ice cream what happens to chips the minute you chew them it melts it melts in your mouth you get hungry if it melts in your mouth that means it didn't stay in your stomach that means it just went right through and you didn't even have to waste any time digesting it feeling full what happens to steak it sits there it has to be broken down for a long time so it gives you satiety makes you feel full for a long time which is 600 calories of steak is much more filling than 600 calories of ice cream but the weight gain is the same so the more you have to chew the more you have to chew something usually the longer you're going to feel full after eating it the faster it melts in your mouth the less time it's going to keep you full after eating it one of the, you know he gave up his pita chips and i gave up my salt and vinegar potato chips even when i bought the reduced calorie ones because i would eat the whole bag so you know you have there's certain things that you do have to give up and when you really 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 are jonesing them just try to serve yourself and walk away small amount the last thing i'm going to say is the most important machine in your life <laughs> is you people spend a ton of, of a ton of money and time on their cars waxing it making it pretty cleaning it getting all the tune ups getting everything they know the exact mileage they know and then when you ask them about their bodies how many calories do you eat a day they go huh <laughs> you are the most important machine in your life make sure you know how you work what you're putting in how much fuel you took that day how much excess fuel you took that day so the next day you have to take less it's work but yeah we do that work on our yard on our cars why don't we do it on our bodies we do <laughs> you gotta do it figure out how many calories you're eating figure out the right nutrition, take your vitamins, you can get healthy. Weight loss surgery will help you beat morbid obesity. Long-term health requires investing and knowledge. That's what we want to provide. Absolutely. So thank you guys for joining us today, and we hope you'll be back next Wednesday. Don't forget, if you can't make it on the live, go ahead and send us your questions. You can DM us, and we will be sure to answer them, and then you can watch the rerun. Do you know that we have reruns? We're not just on live. Reruns? Do we get syndicated? <laughs> Do we get paid for this? Do I get paid Do for I? this? No. Oh, no, no. Never mind. All right, guys. Have a great week. Happy Wednesday. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay.